Yeah. Yeah, I tell you, I, I'm standing. Okay. You know, I'm good. I'm good. Thank you, though. Just in awe of God tonight. I, I told Lisa last night, I said, I think I need to go down to Island Run tomorrow. And, and I certainly was coming looking forward to hear Brother Clark. And, uh, but uh, but God knows what he's doing. Amen, and, he does. And i got to tell you, I'm, I'm just, uh, if, if you ever, I don't know anybody could doubt, right, that there is a God. <laughs> right, because he's faithful and he's just and he provides for, uh, yeah. for our every need. And then again, tonight, I didn't come down here to, to share with you all, but the word tells me to be instant in season and out of season, and yes. I want to be uh, <laughs> I want to be obedient to that. And, yeah. uh, you know, about 16 years ago, I was sitting right where Dennis was sitting, and uh, it was having a homecoming here, and, uh, and Tim and Tim Bell was was preaching the message, and I remember at the very end, you know, those of you who grew up here, you know, uh, you know Tim and his messages and how powerful the Lord just uses him and continues to use him. But at the very end, he he stopped the message and we had the altar call and, and he stopped and he said, somebody's got something to say. Now, there was, gosh, the place was packed. There was a homecoming. He said, someone's got something to say. And lady in the back, uh, she, she popped up and she said a little something. And I remember vividly. There's just certain times in your life that you can remember, amen, that the Lord just, that just yeah. continues to replay. And this is one of those. And the lady popped up and she said something and Tim says, yeah, okay, yeah. And he said, uh, he said, someone else has got something to say. <laughs> and I hadn't started preaching yet, right? I, I was over at Newark, and I was, was doing the youth group, and you know, but I hadn't started preaching yet. And I remember Tim said, I don't usually do this, but I want you to know, he looked me square in the eye, and he said, you've got something to say. Yeah. And I, Jay, I had something to say. <laughs> it was burning inside of my heart. And I remember that. And I stood up, and i got to tell you something. The Holy Spirit took over. I'm not sure what it was I said. Jay, you might remember it. I don't know. Uh, but, but in that moment, I remember the fire that I felt. I remember the excitement yeah. that I felt. I remember how encouraged yeah. I was yeah. right in the Lord. Listen, David said in 1 Samuel chapter 30, I think verse 6, it says he was greatly distressed, but he encouraged himself in yeah. the Lord. Yeah. Over in 1 Thessalonians, it tells us to encourage one another and to build one another up. Yeah. And i got to tell you this tonight, that I am extremely encouraged in the Lord. This season of life, I don't know what God's doing, but I do know this. He's got a plan, yeah. and I want to be part of that plan. I believe he has a plan for this church. Yeah. I don't think it's an accident that he's called us together yeah. for yeah. such a time as this. I think of Esther. Remember uh, way back when she became the queen and, and uh, Mordecai or uh, uh, Haman came up more. It was Mordecai came up and said to her what he said. He said, listen, you can't stay quiet at this time. You were called to be the queen for such a time as this. And I believe that there's a season of life coming in this church. I believe there's a season of life coming in this community that's going to require all of us. I don't care where we live. Okay? We're from all over. I think he's called us together for a reason for such a time as this. And I want to tell you, I'm excited and I'm encouraged. And I remember back to that day. The fire that I felt, the excitement that I felt. And then, Tim, I think about throughout the years, why, why have I let some of that go? Yeah. Right? And I want you to put yourself in that scenario. It's ups and downs, ups and downs. But I need you to know something. God's not winning anywhere. Right. It's not God's fault. <laughs> right. You see, the Bible says that Jesus Christ is the same today, yesterday, yeah. and forevermore. Yeah. You see, yeah. he's not winning. He said, draw near to me, and I'll draw near to you. Yeah. You see, the issue is us, church. Yeah. Right? The issue is on us. God is faithful. That same God that, 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 that spoke to Tim 16 years ago and said, hey, he's got something yeah. to say is the same God today. And through those, this uh, last 16 years, I've been a preaching, but i got to tell you, I don't know that I've ever been as fired up, as excited about what God's doing yeah. than what I am right now. Amen. God is good. Yes, he is. God is faithful. Yeah. I listen, I listen to, to Brother Clark's message there a couple weeks ago on the Holy Ghost. And I got to tell you, I was a solid teacher. I, I enjoyed it. I wanted to know, I learned something. Yeah, yeah. Right? How many knows that just because I'm 37 years old, been preaching for 16 years, I still learning stuff, right? <laughs> Listen, you may have been a Christian for 50 years. We can still learn stuff. This Bible, the Bible says it's, it's sharper than any two-edged sword, right? It cuts in, it cuts going out. It's active, it's alive. We can still learn every single day. In fact, I think that's one of the issues that the church has is that we just quit learning. Right, we we just uh, we've kind of just set back, right, and we just we we've stayed out of the word. We've not 
Uh, I don't know what it is. We've lost a desire. Yeah. Amen. Right? But how many knows we can continue to learn? And I sat and I listened to that teaching and I was learning. And I enjoyed it. I'll tell you what it prompted me to do. It prompted me to get into the book of Acts. Amen. <laughs> and I've been studying. I've been studying the book of Acts these last few nights. I've been sitting on the front porch just studying. That's a, I got a piece of scripture I want to share with you out of that. If you go there, go to Acts, it's chapter 3. Acts chapter 3. How many knows that when the upper room occurred, those old boys came out of there changed? Yeah. <laughs> you see, it seemed like in one of the points, while you're going there, it's chapter 3 of that. In the point I really liked that Clark had made, and I never really put the connection together, is is there was some power that those old boys had after the upper room. Amen. You remember in the Gospels, right? It didn't seem like they had quite the same amount of power, did yeah. the disciples? Right? They said, well, how come we couldn't do that? Yeah. Right? And Jesus would constantly say, where's your faith? Right? Mm -hmm. you, know, you don't have any faith. Yeah. But then after they had that experience and they came out, Oh, my goodness. <laughs> when they came out on fire, didn't they? Yes, they did. Remember Peter and John walking by? And the beggar? <laughs> yeah. The beggar said, hey, hey. I, he said, listen, silver and gold have I none. But anyway, Jesus Christ, get up and walk. He was lame. Amen. Right. How many knows he stood up and he walked? Why? Because of the power of the Holy Spirit. Yes. The power of the Holy Spirit that lives inside of you, that lives inside yes. of me. Amen. Yeah. The Bible says that we have the power of the resurrection. Living inside of us. Amen. The same power that rose Jesus from the dead lives inside of you and inside of me. Now what I want to know is how come we're hesitant? How come we're not seeing people coming to know the Lord? How come that how come we're not using the power? Amen. How come? Listen, it's not a power that says, hey, look at me. Amen. It's a power that says, look at him. Right. Simon Amen. the sorcerer Amen. later Amen. on. You remember, I think it's Acts chapter 6. Maybe we can flip over a few pages. You can test me. Right? <laughs> remember, he came and, and he, he liked what was happening. Right? Yeah. But what did he try to do? He tried to make it about himself. He said, yeah. how much money do I owe yeah. you to get yeah. this? Yeah. Right? Boy, was he rebuked by the disciples. And I think it may have been old Peter. Right? Just stood up to him. Right? And said, oh, how dare you do that <laughs> to the Holy Spirit. It's not about you. It's not about me, but it's about him. Yes, and I've got to tell you something, amen. that there is power in this word and there's power living inside of you. Amen. We've just amen. got to be able to be open and honest and stand before God and say, God, use me. Hey, Paul said he died daily. That's why he said right. he died to himself daily. That's where we got to get to. Yeah. Yeah. And we'll see the Lord move. We'll say, he, something's brewing. Yeah. yeah. Amen. That's what old dad used to say. Yeah. Right? Growing up, storms are brewing. Yeah. Right? You look at them, you see the clouds coming, and say, the storms are brewing. Yeah. I believe something's brewing. Amen. I hope you're excited about Amen. that. Amen. I know I'm excited yes. about that. All right, let's look here. Acts chapter 3. Look what Peter says. He says, we'll start in 17. He's giving them a he's giving them a what for here, giving them the message. Seventh, he says, now, fellow Israelites, I know that you acted in anger, ignorance as you uh, as did your leaders. But this is how God fulfilled what he had foretold through the prophecy, saying that this Messiah would suffer. Now, listen, repent then and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped away. That times of what refreshing may mm -hmm. come from the Lord and that he may send the Messiah who who has been appointed for you, even Jesus. How many wants a time of refreshing? Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, yeah. How many desires a time of refreshing? I think there's a time of refreshing coming for the yeah. church. Yeah. Right? Yes. I believe it in my heart. Listen to me. What he said, he said, turn and repent. Yeah. We gotta get back to repent. Yes, we do. We gotta, that's what that word means. You know that, right? To repent, repent means to turn. Yeah. Over in Psalm 119, I think it's 36 and 37. 36 says that turn, David says, Turn my heart towards your statutes. Amen. Right? Turn my heart towards your words. Right? And it says, turn my eyes away from useless things. Yeah. Now listen, old David knew way back in the Old Testament, right? Yeah. He knew. Turn my heart. We got to get our hearts turned. Yeah. We got to quit seeing with these eyes and start, as Paul said, the eyes of our heart needs to be open. 
Yeah. You want a time of refreshing? You want a revival? You want to see the power of the Holy Spirit? Then we got to start looking with the heart. Yes, amen. Listen, Paul persecuted the church. He was killing Christians. You can keep on reading there in Acts, and you can see where he stood by and he watched them, watched them stone Stephen. Amen. Stephen, a man of boldness, wasn't he? Oh, he was bold. Paul stood back and said he watched him do it. And then over there in chapter 8, you'll start seeing more where Paul was just starting to stir up all kinds of issues among the church. But in chapter 9, something happened. <laughs> Something yeah. happened in chapter 9. He came encounter with the living God. Yes. He came encounter with Jesus the Christ. And in that moment, he repented right. and he Amen. turned. Amen. And I want to say this to you. He was blinded on the road to Damascus. And they told him to go in there, Ananias. We meet him. And he was baptized. The scales fell off his eyes. But I want to offer this to you. I believe that the scales fell off of his heart. The eyes of his heart. Right. That's when yeah. he started Amen. to see. He yep. turned and he repented. Yes. He said, listen, I want nothing more with this former life. I want, to, I want what Christ has for me. I pray yeah. tonight that's what you want. And that's what I want. We don't need this worthless stuff. The useless stuff. We need what Christ wants in our life. Yeah, yeah. We start doing that <laughs> church. I'm telling you. Yeah. I'm telling you. It's going to be exciting. Yeah. We're going to see. He said, test me, didn't he? Over Malachi. Yeah. He said, just test me. See if I just won't pour out a blessing upon you. Yes, he does. Listen, I'm not in it for a personal blessing. Although I like it that the Lord blesses us. Oh, Amen. Yeah. Oh, but you're the blessing that I want to see. The blessing I want to see is that People coming to know Jesus Christ. Amen. My Amen. goodness, look at him. Read it. Go home. <coughs> read the read the whole book of Acts. <laughs> Just how on fire they were, right? How refreshed they were. How encouraged they were. How bold they were. Man, story after story, they were delivering people. They weren't God was, but they were God was using them to deliver people. That's right. Amen. Listen, I know there are some that. Some that say that was meant for that time period. And, you know, you can hear all kinds of teachings and you want to be cautious, right? But, yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, but I want to offer you this. I don't believe we're any different than those boys yeah. in the book of Acts. Right. I want to tell you that. I don't believe we are. I believe that the society and the world may have changed. And I think, unfortunately, the church has changed. And I think that maybe we have changed. But I want to tell you something. We can repent. We can turn back. Right? And we can start seeing the same things that these Amen. guys were doing. Yeah. We can start seeing yes. it in our Amen. community. Listen, Amen. sickness is running amok. Mm -hmm. It is. There's all kinds of sickness. Yeah. How many knows that our God is greater than any yeah. sickness? Amen. Yeah. Amen. He's given us power. Yes. Listen, I understand that there are certain scenarios and certain seasons we might walk through, and I've taught about it before, that, that, that we might experience some things so we can help other people. Right. But I don't believe for a second that we're meant to, to, to stay in it. I don't believe for a second that we're meant to live in it. Right? He said he came to give us life and life more abundantly. Right? And that life is, yes, eternal with heaven. But I believe he wants to bless us down here so that we then in turn Amen. can bless others. Amen. We can see it, church. We just got to believe it. We just got to believe You said, preacher, that sounds too simple. Listen. I don't find this to be all that complicated. Yeah. I really don't. Amen. I really don't. I think we try to complicate things. Yeah. Yeah. And I think people within the even within the church try to complicate things. Yeah. But I don't think it's all that hard. <laughs> the way I read it, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, yeah. and whosoever believe in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus loves you. Yeah. Jesus loves me. Jesus loves this community. And I believe he's wanting the, the church to rise up, to be the hands and feet, to go out and share that love. Amen. Yes. Listen, listen, we got to be encouraged with one another, mm -hmm. right? We got to be in one accord. Yeah. We got to be in this thing together. I want you to know that the, the time that we've been coming down, I think it's been since February since JB called. And I gotta tell you, the Lord's just been working. He's just been working. I don't have complete clarity. Me and Brother Tim have been talking. I got no idea, but you know what? That's a good 
exciting yeah. part about Amen. it. Amen. I don't have to know the answers. You don't have to know yeah. the answers. Amen. See, the disciples, they were guilty of that. They wanted to know everything, didn't they? Yeah. They remember that they come up to Jesus. Which one of us is the greatest? <laughs> right? Give me a break. What's Jesus say? Come on, boneheads, right? Yeah. It don't matter any of that. Yeah. We don't have to figure it all out. Yeah. He's got to figure out. He just wants yeah. us to be a vessel. That's right. He just wants us to walk into it. That's right. To walk into the Spirit and allow the Spirit to lead into God. I tell you, the Bible school we had this past Saturday was awesome. You want to know what I liked a lot? That one song. It said, listen, if he says go right, go right. Yeah. yeah. If he says go left, yeah. go left. Uh -huh. Right? Hey, but how are we going to do that, church? If we're not plugged into it. Right. Right. If we're not spending time, if we're not seeing with the eyes of our heart, right? If we're not being led by his spirit, how are we gonna know? Yeah. How are we gonna know? We need one another. Yes, we do. need this word. Mm -hmm. Yes. This word. I tell you, it just comes, it's just it's coming more and more alive to me. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. And I'm excited about that. <laughs> and I pray you are too. Amen. He said, repent. Times of refreshing. Oh God. And as we can see clear throughout, even in the Old Testament, even in the Old Testament, where God would take a situation. I think about Joseph. Joseph from the pit to the palace. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Or maybe to the to the as a prisoner to the prime minister. Right? Yeah. Look what God would do. Look what God would do. He would take what would look like an impossible situation and he would turn it into something amazing for Amen. his glory. Amen. Listen to me. I don't know a whole lot about the situation that we've been praying for, but I do know this. God can take that situation and he can turn it into something powerful. He can yeah. turn it into Amen. a testimony. Amen. And tonight I'm going to stand on yeah. faith and believe that. Yeah. And I'm Amen. going to proclaim that over that situation Amen. because I believe there's power in the blood of Jesus Amen. Christ. Amen. 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 He said, his own brothers, Joseph's own brothers, threw him in that pit. Gosh, we ever been there? We ever been with, with some of the closest people to us? Try and toss us in the pit? Or, hey, how about this? Quench the spirit? Or, or, or try and water down the fire? <laughs> oh, you believe that stuff? Yeah, 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 I do. Yeah, yeah I do. Yeah, I and I want to tell you, ain't nobody going to tell me any different, yeah, right? Man. Because I know, I know, I was in third grade when he came into my heart. That was years ago. And I've not been perfect. I want you to know that right now. But he has. There's been times I've turned my back on him, but he's never once turned his back on me. And I know without a shadow of a doubt that my Savior's inside of my heart, and he lives inside of you, and he lives inside of me. And he wants us, and he desires us to proclaim his name and to praise him. Yeah. You see, the church, that's something that we've been failing at, too. I don't mean to be doom and gloom tonight, but what I want to say is that we don't do a great job praising. Yeah. We do a real good job of asking. Come on. Yeah. We, we, God, I'd like you to do this, 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 and this. When I believe there's some times we just got to sit down and we just got to praise Him yeah. and just yeah. thank Him for who He is. Yeah. Thank Him. For, I sat on my front porch there last night. I just thanked Him for the house. I thanked Him for the family. Yeah. I thanked Him for the fact that we've got food on the table. Yeah. Things that we take for granted, we got to stop. We got to stop taking this stuff for granted. Amen. You see, we don't understand. We don't understand persecution. I don't believe. Right? I need you to know something. I said this Sunday morning, maybe Sunday evening. I don't know. I've been preaching, so I'm not even sure when I said it, but I believe I said it. Is that God is, is a God of more than just America. Right? Yeah. Right? Yeah. right? Yeah. He's the God of the world. He's yeah. the God of the universe. Yeah. Now listen, I believe, we, I believe we're blessed to live in America. Amen. We are. Amen. We are blessed. Oh, but my goodness, don't let that spoil us now, church. Yeah. Right? Right. Don't you dare get comfortable. Mm -hmm. right? Because I want to tell you something. There are people, there are Christians all over this world that know what persecution is. Amen. Yeah. yeah. Right. Amen. That, 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 that they've been said point blank. Deny him. Yeah. yeah. Or I will take your life. Amen. Right? That's still happening. Yeah. Amen. That's still happening. Yeah. Oh, we got to pray for him. We got to pray for strength. We got to pray for courage. I need you to know something. I don't want us to get complacent just because we live in a blessed place. Right. Amen. Right? Because I want to say something else. 
But there are people even up and down Route 53 right now. They might live in America, but they don't know Jesus. Yeah. They don't know Jesus. And I'm not saying that as a critical thing towards them. What I am saying, though, is that it's critical and imperative of us to get out there and share it with them. Amen. Yes. Right? Hey, you remember the woman at the well in John chapter 4? Yeah. Right? She had no idea what she was in for, <laughs> did she? She had to go at the middle of the day, remember? Yeah. Right? Because she was kind of the outcast. Right. She had to go in the middle of the day. Oh, my, and she encountered the Savior. He says, ma'am, may I have a drink? And she said, well, you can't be asking me. He goes, listen, if you knew who's asking, you'd be asking me for one. Right. Yeah. And then the conversation carried on. Knew everything about her. Remember what she did? She ran back into Samaria. And she said, come see a man. Yeah. He knew everything about me. Yeah. And she started a revival. That's what happened. A revival <laughs> broke out. People came to know who Jesus was. There are people up and down 53 that we need to go out in this county, wherever God says to go, go right, go right, go left, go left, wherever, that need to hear your story, Amen. need to hear your Amen. testimony. Yes. Need us, well, listen, we're overcomers by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. Right. They need us to go out and say, hey, come see a man. Yeah. <laughs> come see a man that took this impossible situation and made it possible. Yeah. How I many knows nothing is impossible for God? Yes, amen. That's right. Amen. Luke one thirty seven. Nothing is impossible mm -hmm. with God. Yeah. Do you believe that tonight? <laughs> oh, I believe. I hope it's. I hope it's deep down that you believe that nothing is impossible. Yeah. You say, listen, I've been ministering to this one person for a long time. They just won't hear it. Keep ministering. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Keep loving. Keep serving. Mm -hmm. As he said, don't grow weary. And do it. I believe it's Galatians. Well says, Don't grow weary in doing good, for at yes, the proper time you'll reap the harvest. Yes, amen. I also want to encourage you tonight by saying this. Paul said that he planned to see the Paulus water that the God made the increase. Yes, You're amen. not always going to see the amen. fruit, church. Amen. And that's got to be okay. Yeah. We got to be okay with just out loving people. Amen. Loving people and letting God do the rest. <laughs> but as day by day, week by week, calendar just flips over. Mm -hmm. Oh, there's too many in the church that are just sitting on our hands, sitting on the pew. Yes. Like I've said before, have a form of godliness, but denying the power of their yeah. Listen. Listen, Joseph was persecuted. He was. You're going to be persecuted. Amen. It might not be to the extent that some other countries are going through, but you're going to face it. Right? Amen. You're going to face it. You're going to face it. How do we respond? How do we respond? I believe we respond with the same fire, the same encouragement. He's the God in the valley, just like he's the God on the mountaintop. You want people to see the Lord? Hey, they're going to look and see how you respond in those difficult times. I assure you, you've got people right now looking at you, watching how you act, seeing what you say. They, he says he's a Christian. Yeah. Right? They got eyes on you. And they're in on me. And they're watching how we respond. And it's easy, church, in the good times. In the times of refreshing, yeah. right, it's easy to say praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's in those difficult times. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's in those difficult times that the enemy wants to come in. The Bible says in Isaiah 53, the enemy comes in like a flood. The Spirit of the Lord brings a standard up against it. Mm -hmm. We gotta hold. Mm -hmm. We gotta hold on yeah. to that standard. We gotta hold on to the Lord in those difficult times. Mm -hmm. And that's that's your testimony. Amen. That's when people are going to come to know. Come see a man. Yeah. How could you see? How could you say that when you're going through this? <laughs> because greater than he that is in me than he that is in the world. Right. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. That's a promise, church. Greater is he that lives inside of you than greater than, than he that is in the world. The enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. We know that. I need you to know you got power over him. Yes, sir. Amen. Right here. Right. Amen. That's it. This word, he's got to flee. He's got to flee. Resist the devil, and he will flee from Amen. you. Amen. It didn't say yes. he might. It didn't say that. 
It says, resist, resist that he will flee from you. Why? Yes, because amen. he can't be in the presence. Amen. Oh, amen. Yeah. Yes. It's living in your heart. It's living in my heart. Oh, may we just, may we see, may we see with the eyes yes. of our heart mm -hmm. and turn, turn back to God for the times of refreshing. Again, not, not so we can say, oh, bless me, bless me. But so that we can say, hey, we're going to be your hands. Yes, we're going to be your feet. We're going to love people. <laughs> Amen. Love people. Thank you. Now listen to me. I didn't say condemn. Right? Right. There's a difference now. Right? We can love someone and not condone what yeah. they do. Amen. Don't you think that's what Jesus did in John chapter 8 before we caught in the act of adultery? Yeah. She went, he went and loved her and then restored her and then said, What? Hey, let's go and yes. sin no more. Yes. Like, Amen. He didn't condone anything. Right. Amen. But he provided mercy. He provided grace. Yeah. How many knows that same mercy and grace he gives to us? Amen. Who are we not to give it? Amen. To someone else. Tonight I'm excited. <laughs> I'm encouraged tonight. The Bible says, as iron sharpens iron, one man sharpens another. Amen. That's why we need to be together. Hebrews chapter 10, I think 25, somewhere around in there, talks about how not, not forsaking the assembly, right? But right prior to that, it says that we are to, to provoke one another Amen. Right, to towards love That's right, to righteousness. righteousness and good works. Amen. Right? Amen. To, to Amen. provoke one another. We got to find us a place. We got to find us a fellowship that does just that. Amen. Right? Yeah. Yep. Right? We got to find us a place that will provoke and encourage and you feel uplifted. I told him Sunday morning, I said, listen, if you're coming into the house of God, no matter what service it might be, and you're leaving discouraged or dismayed, yeah. something's wrong. Yes. Amen. Something's wrong. Right? we got to check our hearts, first of all. And second of all, maybe that's just not the place. Yeah. Uh, I mean, uh, this is called what it is. True. Yeah. Right? So, but, we, but we get so comfortable, right? And we get so used to doing the same things over and over again. Listen, I hear Our relationship with God, my relationship, I'll use me, my relationship with Christ 16 years ago when I was standing right there, it can't be the same as what it was that day. <laughs> right. It Amen. better not be. Amen. Right? And you substitute in whatever, uh, uh, you know, you were converted or whatever ministry, whatever it might be. If it's the same church, then you better check yourself. Amen. Amen. You see, it's a relationship that is ongoing. Mm -hmm. How come relationships go stagnant? Because we ignore them. Absolutely. That's why. Because we don't communicate. Why do we think our relationship with Christ is any different? Right. Right. Paul told Timothy, man, the blame. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> crazy, crazy situation. At least in now, I'm about to. I'm about to. That's the preacher's way of buying it some more time. <laughs> <laughs> Lisa and I got married in 2007. I believe it's probably about 2009, 2010. We bought the house over on Stone House. Y'all remember when we bought that house over on Stone House? It had an outdoor wood stove in it. And here I am, 37, probably not great in those type of situations. Now, imagine me when I was about 25, right? Who knew, Tim, that you had to throw wood in that wood stove to, to keep the heat in the house? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Isn't that a crazy thing? If, if the wood's not in the wood stove, then the fire's going to go out. Right. Right? And I remember, it was the winter, well, probably right at the very beginning, the first time. I remember Lisa. Well, excuse me. I'm cold. I said, well, it seems like the heat's off. And I went out. Well, yeah. Big dummy, everybody went in the woods stuff. <laughs> right? Yeah. Now, let's just pause for a second. Right? If we're not feeding the flame, if we're not in the word, if we're not spending time in prayer, if we're not being with one another, encouraging one another, guess what? That fire is going to go out. Fact. That fire is going to go out. you got a part to play. Yeah. I've Amen. got a part to play. Amen. Yeah. 
He loves us, but he doesn't force that love on us. That wouldn't be love, mm -hmm. right? He gives us the opportunity, and he invites us. Yeah. He says, behold, I stand at the door and knock. <laughs> oh. Fan in the flame, provoking and pushing one another towards good, uh, good works and, and love. Tonight I'm blessed. Tonight you're blessed. Amen. Yeah. I tell you, I'm, I'm excited about what the Lord's doing. Amen. Can I not even say what I want to do? Can I just say what He's doing? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. And no, we might not know what it looks like tomorrow or the week after but let's keep walking let's keep walking towards the cross towards our Savior letting all the distractions go away right Peter kept his eyes Amen. right on Jesus and as he was doing it Amen. that old boy was walking on the water Amen. it wasn't because of his own power it was because of Christ and I believe he'd still be walking if he was still looking Amen. at him yes Right. Took his eyes off and he slipped out. Isn't it good to know that the Lord didn't let him drown? Yeah. The Lord saved me, which he yeah. came back up. Tonight I'm so thankful that years ago the Lord reached out and he saved my soul. Amen. He saved Amen. my soul. He reached out and he picked me up. He cleansed me. He cleansed you. He calls us beautiful. He calls <laughs> us wonderful. He calls us his righteousness. Yeah. Yes, he does. Church, shame on us mm -hmm. if we don't go out and share that with the world. Tonight, I love you. I love being with you. <laughs> I love the Lord. I love his presence. The goodness of God. Let's pray.